Hey howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here and today joining me is Malachi Salee. What's going on everybody? Today we're reviewing the Canon 6D Mark I. Just picked up this bad boy for like $550. Yeah, so I think that the Canon 6D Mark I is one of the most underrated budget full frame cameras that you can buy today. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Gear Focus. So the Canon 6D Mark I came out way back in 2012, and I don't know what it is. I think something about 2012 with Canon cameras, there was some mojo going on back then because the Canon 1DC also came out in 2012, and it had this really beautiful look, and I think the 6D Mark I also has that. So what we're going to be doing today is Malachi is going to be taking some photos and video with his 6D Mark I, and we're going to check it out, see how it looks, and also compare that a little bit to the Canon EOS R, which we're shooting on right now. But before we get to any of that, I would like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsor, Gear Focus. Okay guys, so if you haven't heard of Gear Focus, Gear Focus is a great new platform to buy and sell used gear. And the best thing is, is that they're built by creators for creators and they monitor every transaction to make sure every transaction is safe. Now I know what you're thinking, well, dude, I'll just use eBay instead. Well, eBay charges really crazy seller fees. In fact, I think they can charge up to 13%, which is absolutely crazy. Gear Focus on the other hand only charges 3% after you sell the item and there are no fees until you actually sell the item, which is really amazing. And right now, through April 10th, because of all the craziness that's going on right now in the world, Gear Focus is helping us creators out and charging zero seller fees through April 10th, which I think is absolutely crazy. So guys, if you're interested in buying any used gear like the 6D Mark I and maybe upping your game a little bit, definitely check out Gear Focus. But also, if you're interested in selling some gear, maybe helping yourself out during these uncertain times, also definitely check out Gear Focus. All links will be in the description down below. Welcome to Zach's studio. We're barging into his studio to go ahead and take a look at really nice. the 6D Mark I files and then comparing them to the EOS R files. Initially, we weren't gonna do a comparison, but we thought this would be a great way to see how well the 6D holds up in 2020. We're comparing a 2012 camera to a 2019 camera, so this should be pretty interesting. Both are full frame. So we have the same photo pulled up, shot with the same settings and the same lens. So we're just gonna kinda go through each photo and see how they compare and see how the 60 holds up. Yes. Sound good? Sounds wonderful. Cool, Malachi, tell us uh, what you did here. All right, so I just added a little basic edit, nothing too crazy, just kind of uh, corrected the highlights and the shadows so it looks so flat because it was a raw file. Yeah. We didn't do any crazy edits because we wanted we didn't want to disrupt the footage quality. We didn't want to make it like super punchy or anything. So this is pretty minor edits, just like you said, correcting. Mm -hmm. And the 6D is on the left, the EOS R is on the right, and right off the bat, just kind of looking at the two photos, both look fantastic. Yeah, they both do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. The 6D looks slightly punchier. It looks like there's a little more like fall off to the left. All right, and if you look in this area right here. Yeah. Yeah, you got the mouse right direct. Uh, it looks a little more sharp from the EOS R. As that looks a little more like fuzzy. Fuzzy and blurry. Yeah, so like kind of the, the fall off, I feel like it's maybe a little bit better. Yeah, I, I gotta say, there. I mean, honestly, looking at these two photos, you can they both look amazing. There's there's nothing inherently wrong mm -hmm. with either photo. I do like the light on your face in the USR one though. But that could have just been due to the sunlight that is or something true. else. Um, that is pretty similar. Let's go ahead and move on to the next photo. Right, let's move on to the next. There we go. Cool. Is this the same settings and the same edit? Uh, Yeah, same settings, same edit. So... Okay, clearly the sun came into play here a little bit. Oh yeah, you can actually see the sun mm -hmm. actually came in on the R1, but again, let's zoom in here and kind of check out the details in my face. I definitely looks cleaner. It looks a little R. cleaner on mm -hmm. the R. Um, there's still like a little bit of weird fun stuff going on. A little on. extra detail. Yeah, it's, it's the 60. But honestly, it still looks really good. Yeah, not bad at all. Again, this is this camera came out eight years ago. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Of course, Canon has just always been really good at the quality of their stuff. I mean, the 60's built like a tank. It really is. So it hasn't degraded at all in these eight years. It's still a very, very viable camera. Honestly, between the two of them, yeah. the build of the 6D feels more solid than, than the, the R. Yeah, yeah I would the R kind of feels a little more light. I do agree with that, because I do know that the um, Dave Mays he had an EOS R mm -hmm. and it was sitting in a camera bag and it actually broke. There's a little 
a uh, little screen on the top, uh, like this, just like this. Oh yeah. And uh, the screen on the R broke. I feel like this thing, I could throw it down the stairs and it would still work. Right. <laughs> which is um, which something almighty. to be said for these old Canon cameras. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. The 70D I had for forever, like it went through so much. All right. So let's go ahead and pull up. There we go. Oh my Zach word. and Zach. Look at that. So pretty. Actually, I I like the skin tones more. Yeah. On the did 6D. you have yours on like the white balance for like cloudy day? Yeah, I did. So okay. it should uh, they're exactly the same in that way, and I, I think I like. This is a manual lens though, so this one the 28 the millimeter. Focus may be a little different be between a little the two. Off. It was a vintage manual lens, but I don't know. I'm I'm. I it's pretty nailed. Though. It looks looks really good on both photos, but I mm -hmm. think that 6D, I don't know, there's something about that. It looks looks really, really nice. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> like, this is the perfect mom shot. <laughs> with uh, me and Zach here. Right. So. Got a little bit of a uh, little hazy purple. This is taken a... on the uh, Helios, right? Was it? I think the last photo we took on I the Helios. Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah so this, right. this is taken on the Helios. What do you say, a little purpley, a little hazy? Yeah, like down the bottom left, you can kind of oh, see yeah. a little stuff going on just from the light kind of bouncing the lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that that is from the vintage lens, you're right. Again, I think, <laughs> look at the... It's not bad at all. I like, think it actually both look good in this case. The focus yeah, is a think, little yeah, bit missed is, here. Yeah, but that's, again, completely. it's just a manual lens, but... There's definitely more like red pronunciation yeah, I on think, the 6D sensor. I don't know if it's necessarily accurate, but I do kind of like it. Maybe this mm -hmm. is more accurate to reality, but I do like it. I mean, those Canon colors, they just, they haven't changed much at all no. in these eight years. And for good reason, because they would just look so good, man. I don't know, okay, that's, I gotta say, I was uh, kind of hoping that there'd be a bigger difference. Me too. Just because, the R is so much newer, and also it's so much more expensive. I mean, the oh, R yeah. right now, you, it's uh, you might be able to get it a little bit cheaper on B and H, but I know when it came out, it was twenty three hundred dollars body only, versus now the six D Mark One, which you can pick up for right around five hundred, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more than that, and it's holding up beautifully. Obviously, it there's is. a little bit of difference. I know you were telling me that one of the things you don't like about the six D is uh, shutter speed. For photos. Yeah, shutter speed is terrible. Went from a 70D where it was like a freaking machine gun going off. Yeah. To now it's like a, a bolt action rifle. Yeah, I think, what'd you say? It's like four frames a second? Yeah, four and a half. Four and a half. Mm -hmm. So 4.5. So if you're doing like high speed stuff, like sports, cars, anything like that. Maybe not the best. Maybe not the best. I will also say that the autofocus points on the. How are you Oh, oh you know, we're doing good. Hey. It looks like you guys might need a little recharge. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh. Thank some you coffee. So much. Dude, I need to come to your studio more often. Yeah. This is fantastic. I think I'm gonna go ahead and move out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alright, you well, guys take over the rent. Oh. 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 So Okay. Oh, here's my cat. He's okay. allergic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good video, boys. Thanks. Thanks um, back to what I was saying. I think wow, coffee, thanks. You got coffee. Mm. So back to what I was saying, there's actually only 11 autofocus points on the 6D, which pales in comparison to the R. Uh, I don't actually know how many autofocus points are on the R, but I know it just, I'll put it on the screen like right here. It is monumentally- Holy cow! Yeah, I know. That's a lot more. Now that's a lot of damage. But the autofocus, if you just make sure it's centered out focus and you just lock mm -hmm. on, it is super accurate. Like yeah. the dual pixel autofocus from what I've seen and I'm sure from what you've experienced is crazy good oh, on yeah. the 6D. Yeah, I was doing a photo shoot last week and immediately, like I was kind of like hesitant because immediately out of the box, what I like to do kind of those car photos where things are moving a lot. But I did a still car shoot and beforehand I was like, ah, I don't know. Like, yeah. Not sold in this camera, but after the shoot, I was like, wow, okay, these pictures turned out fantastic. I think I can deal with a solar shutter for right now until I have some extra money yeah. for a faster camera. And then that's the thing. This is just, this is a budget camera. This is mm -hmm. a full frame budget camera. So if you can't invest a grand or two grand, which makes sense. I mean, these yeah. things are expensive and you really want to get into the full frame world. This is, this which is, is a, excellent coming yeah. from crop. This is a great camera to kind of get you started 
and eventually you can upgrade from this when the money makes sense. Right. But so yeah, says, there's some mojo with this camera. Yeah, I mean like five, six hundred dollars, you know, get that, 50 mil, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely, the, the little nifty 50, Yeah. it's like a hundred dollars. Fantastic starter That'd lens. be a great combination. You can you just can... start with like some portrait photography. Nice. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and take a quick look because we shot a 1080p test between yes. the 60 and the R, so let's go ahead and take a quick do look that. at that. Okay, so we have the 60 loaded up on the left and we have the EOS R up on the right hand side. And I'm just gonna say, this is probably going to be the biggest difference. This is I the mean, biggest difference. When it comes to photography, photos and RAW really haven't upgraded that much mm -hmm. over the past eight years, but video has definitely seen a massive increase. So we're probably going to see a big difference even in the 1080 files, but let's just go ahead and see and compare just so we are complete and we've done a full test. So this is shot on the same lens at 24 mm -hmm. frames per second, 100 ISO with studio lighting. So on the left, let's go ahead and play the 6D footage, which not it doesn't bad. look bad necessarily at all. I think that maybe we could have bumped up the ISO a little bit. I think that's maybe what it needed. But then if we go over here on the right hand side, I'll move my mouse out of the way, we hit play. Let's see what that looks. I think it looks a lot it's cleaner. It's a clear winner right there. It's a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't Sharper. feel as blocky. Sharpness might have been pulling focus. Uh, Cause it was a manual lens. So I don't- I did lock it up. I guess you're right, yeah. So. It does look a little bit sharper, um, actually quite a bit sharper. Mm -hmm. um, but this is to be expected. Video definitely has seen the biggest increase when it comes to technology 100%. in these cameras, but this is still totally usable and totally acceptable. We still haven't fully transitioned to a 4K environment. And again, if you're just trying to get started with that full frame look, this is just a great budget option. 100%. Anyways, guys, I just want to quickly thank Malachi for coming on the channel. Dude, of course. Shaking your hand feels weird. There we yeah, go. I just want to quickly thank Malachi for coming onto the channel and lending Anytime. his awesome 6D Mark One. I. I hope you guys enjoyed the Done. video and I hope you got something out of it. So as always, thanks for hanging. Kapow. <laughs>